Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Big Money Silas Podcast. I am Danielle, the creator of Natural Beauty Row Hair Extensions, and I have actually been doing this podcast for 20 years. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I've been doing this. <laughs> pod- it feels like it sometimes, though. So. I've been doing this podcast for three years, and I am a person of consistency. Like, I preach that a lot. Like, I truly and genuinely believe that consistency is a part of the reason I have success in life with my business, with my body, with my children, with my relationships is I, I'm almost like scared to like fall off the wagon because yeah. I'm like, then you play this game of you're always like trying to catch up. It was so funny, not funny, Garrett, we were doing a training yesterday. I'm going to share this quote really, really quick and then we're going to get started. I write down when I hear good quotes. Do you do that? I do. I screenshot, say, yeah, <laughs> you're like, ah, that really hit so home. Good. It was, and it just depends on where you're at in life, right? Right. So it's easier to keep up than catch up. Very it's easier true. to keep up than catch up. Yeah. Because how many times do you find that you, it's like you lose momentum and then you're like, do all this work and you just get back to like the starting point and then you like lose momentum and then you just climb back up to the starting point. So you're not really going anywhere. It's like no. the false illusion of like you're busy, but you're not actually progressing and that sucks, that space to be in, because you then you you think, like, I don't have time for anything else. I'm already so busy. Uh-huh. But you're really, like, you're never really surpassing, like, this, like, next level. Like, you're literally, like, you're hitting, you're, like, trying to get somewhere, and then you're self-sabotaging. They're trying to get somewhere. I think, I think it's a lot of procrastination, too. Like, I have always been a procrastinator, and so mm. it's almost like I worked better under pressure sometimes. Where yeah. Because like, then you can just, like, hurry and get it done. But I'm like, oh, well, I have a month to do this. It's yeah. fine. And then it comes down to it and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got like two days and I've got to get all this done. So it makes you more overwhelmed and I'm I, so bad with that. I think that most people, well, first off, you guys, this is a new face in the podcast. This Hi. is Brett. What is your last name? Brett Cody? Cody. Okay, I thought so. Yeah. And then I was like, Brett Cody. It was like so cute that I was like, that's not her last name. Maybe that's like a middle name. Like I didn't I've know. I've always had a boy name. So my, my, um, I like boy names for girls. name was Timothy. So I've always oh, had like okay. boy names. That's funny. Completely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I have four girls and two of my girls. I have a Charlie and a Bailey and those can kind of yeah, be boy names. I so love the Charlie. I kind of, so I, I like boy names for girls. I think, yes. I think they're cute. But this is Brett. She is actually um, inside of my education. She's one of my students inside the academy. Are you graduated? Are you licensed? Licensed artist. Woo-hoo, yep. yay. I thought, yep. so. I couldn't remember if you were or like getting close, but I you're licensed. I that deadline right at convention last year. Oh, okay. So it was like right Sweet. when I got home. Home, I, I was licensed. Nice. So. I um whenever we have students in time in time in, in town, I try to take the opportunity to just like to have them on a podcast. So welcome today. You, you are out of Utah. Tell us about your salon and where you're located. So I'm in E from Utah, and I own a salon. It's called Studio B. Okay. Um, I have I actually have three three girls with me that are going through the getting ready to go through the academy. Oh, cool. So I have one, she's getting ready to be licensed as well. Nice. And then I have Mariah, she's actually here for training right now. And she's so. in phase one, right? She's a, yep. Okay, cool. Yep. So how many, um, do you, you have a salon, how many artists total do you have? Three? There are nine of us. Oh, there's nine? Is it yep. your salon? Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Yep. Okay. Yep. I've worked inside this salon for nine years and I actually just took over the whole salon um, almost two years ago. So. How'd that happen? Um, <laughs> the girl just kind of stepped away and was over running the salon she has her her whole life is just like her kids and things like that and I think she was just ready to step back she was from done. it so I took I took it on um but yeah I I, I love being a salon owner you it's, do it is it's overwhelming like mm-hmm. the first year was nuts but yeah I, I think I got the rhythm down now now so. yeah there's always like a cleanup here where yeah. you're like okay what's working what's not working kind of thing yeah and then it's like once you get your systems and processes in place then you're like, okay, I can breathe a little bit. Yeah. So do you have a salon manager or are you the manager of everybody? I'm the manager of everybody. And but we are all booth rental. Oh, okay. So, so that makes it a little bit easier. It does. The girls kind of run their own businesses. I'm just there to make sure everything runs smoothly. How so. does it work with, do you do any, so with booth rank, they can offer like any services they want. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the ones that offer NBR, was this something they just kind of wanted to do on their own? Do you support them in the journey, or how does that yeah, work? Yeah, so um, because I started <clears throat> first, uh, I remember Callie, she, she's always been into extensions, mm-hmm. and so she kind of started to watch me, and I feel like she really just started to be like, I want to do this too, because mm-hmm. she saw how fast that I was growing. Yeah. And we live in a small town, so the fact that we have three of us inside my salon who do NBR. And are busy, yeah. It's amazing, mm-hmm. and we all have clients, and we all stay busy. So. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's funny, too, because 
I I don't know if you knew this. I started my brand in a small town, mm-hmm. and it, still to this day, we have um, students come into the academy, and they're like, "Well, I live in a small town." So, talk to me about living in a small town. What were some of the hurdles you had to break through in your own mindset to be like, no, like with your marketing and everything? Because that is incredible that you are in a small town. You have a full big of extension clients. I know that that's hard to do because I've done it. Right. And I just I I realized when I started in a small town, like it. And I'll just share this really quick. I remember getting there and I was asking like the prices and what everybody was charging. And I was like, and I had come moved, just moved from Salt Lake City to Gilbert, Arizona. And I was like hoping to charge more. And all the women in my salon spa studio were charging less than I was charging. I was like, I'm not going to do that. And so that really pushed me to jump out of my comfort zone and start getting online and marketing through YouTube and any kind of social media I could find to get clients and it's crazy because I thought I needed to work in like Scottsdale. That's like the mm-hmm. bigger town with the nicer salons. Right. And I would call Scottsdale and ask them what their prices were. And I was like, I'm going to charge more than what they're charging in Scottsdale. And I started getting women to drive from Scottsdale to, to come see me. Right. And it's not like there wasn't extensions in Scottsdale. And so I, when, when I have students that are like, well, I live in a small town. I'm like, well, then you have a marketing problem. So talk to mm-hmm. me about like, how did you get, what does your marketing look like? How did you overcome some of those? Like, Hey, I live in a small town. Like, how did you kind of get started and get your marketing going? Um, it took me a minute because I feel like in a small town, I, when I very first started NBR, I had a lot of people in my area that kind of think thought that I was crazy that they were like, you can't do that here. Nobody will pay for it. Mm-hmm. Like that is all I ever heard. Yeah. And it was really hard to come home and like explain to my husband that I just bought this huge ticket price to this event and mm-hmm. to learn this extension method. But yeah, everybody was telling me that it wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to actually go out to see Kiki and I, mm. when she would fly in and I would do everything I could to go and like assist her and make sure that I was always learning and trying to get into the like the marketing and like really listen to her she helped me a lot in the did beginning. you g- fly out to here and go assist kiki in west hollywood or? no she would come to utah is when she oh. was flying back to utah so for clients yeah oh, and okay. so she'd tell me when she'd come in and she'd be like hey do you want to assist me and mm. she she helped me a lot to understand just don't listen to the outside mm-hmm. noise and like just block it all out and it was hard though in the beginning to really block it out and yeah. she just said just mark it. And yeah. so head down. Like, yeah. 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 And just <clears throat> posting everything. Like, even if it wasn't good, the fact that you were talking about extensions yeah. every single yes. day is it's people big. notice. Yeah. Yes. And, and artists get stuck in this mindset of like, if it's not perfect, I'm not going to post it. And that's why I preach consistency so much. I'm yeah. like, there's some days you're going to be like, that is, I've nailed that, I've hit that out of the park, you know? And then there's some days you're like, man, eh, it's okay. But you almost have to be annoying and yeah. not care. And you know what? I always joke around. I'm like, the only person that's looking at your feed the most is yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the reality is, is like, and think about like when you, when I see like, when I get emails or stuff, I see stuff through social media, it takes me like six times before I'm finally like annoyed enough where I'm like, actually, I do like those shoes. Or actually, like <laughs> I just bought this bodysuit the other day on Instagram. This ad kept running and I literally had seen it like every day. Well, they finally got me. Yep. <laughs> they finally yep. got me. I bought this, like, I bought two, like, bodysuits that were, like, 150 bucks each. I'm like, I spent $300 on bodysuits, but they got me. You <laughs> know what I mean? Fine. And I was, like, kind of annoyed that I saw that ad again. So you kind of, so you had got, so Kiki w- is one of my um, trainers in Natural Beauty Rose. Kiki always kind of stood out to me from the beginning. I, she, I could just see she's, like, a little hustler. I could, I knew, like, hearing her story, like, she was similar to me in the sense that she's like, I don't have another choice. Like, I don't have any money. I got to make this work. I can't listen to anybody else. I don't have time to sit in the salon and right. wait for clients to come to me I don't have time to move to LA and make it big even though she started in LA Uh she everybody thought she was crazy and then she ended up opening her own salon in West Hollywood so you went and you assisted Kiki and you kind of just like she was kind of your mentor a little bit through this this journey of like hey like supporting you giving you like permission like you need to just market people will come so did you you just started posting and are would you say all of your clients are kind of from your town or like how far are they kind of coming in from um I have people that um, I've got at least three girls that travel in from St. George. So that's oh, cool. a three and a half hour drive. I have people that come from Salt Lake. That's mm-hmm. at least an hour and a half to two hours. Mm-hmm. So I say at least 50% of my clientele is drive in. They're driving yeah. like a couple hours. Right? Yeah. So yeah. it just shows that just because you live in a small town doesn't mean that you... You'll get surrounding cities. You will. Yeah, you it's totally crazy. Will. And you can't, just because of what, you know, wherever you live, you can't let your pocketbooks or, like, determine what somebody else values, right? No. I always say, I value hair. 
And yeah. even when I had like no money and was like broke, I was like, oh no, I'm getting my extensions done. Yes. And so I'm like, who am I to say like the, these people won't pay it when we, even when I was broke, I would pay well, it. Well, I, I actually have a couple of clients that they have good, decent jobs and they make good money, mm-hmm. but they don't want to take that money away from their family. Yeah. So they have other ways of getting income. The one she's like, I will go and put in an extra shift at the gas station just just to, to get her hair fund. Sh- yeah, yeah. So to to say that somebody can't afford something, it if it's a, important enough, they will. They will do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they will they will drive. We get a lot of clients um, from L.A., San Diego, a lot of our surrounding areas too, and they have no problem driving in. And it's right. not even like it's yeah, it's about like pretty hair, but something about your message and how you market probably spoke to them. Right. You know what I mean? And I always tell people like in the beginning, I when I started my brand, it was like. Everybody, I would, I marketed how shitty my real hair was. I, yes. was. I was like, I have toddler hair. It's really bad. You should come see me. Like, that was my pitch in the beginning. Yeah. And I was surprised how many women were like, yeah, I'll fly in. I have shitty hair, too. I was like, okay, <laughs> thanks. That's great. Let's do it. So it's like you almost have to like, I always tell people in marketing, sometimes you kind of bond through those moments of pain. You do. And then it's like you're like, they almost like trust you more and they're kind of coming in. Well, because so, honestly... The people that sit on my chair aren't people that have amazing hair. It's yeah. the people that I've attracted are people that really need my help and have have seeked me out to, yeah. to help them. It's funny because I don't do any influencer hair um, because I just I tried that and it wasn't fun. I was like, it's a pain no. in the ass. No. And they 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 don't they don't post and do the things or say they're going to do, even though they sign contracts. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm really after real women who like me have like hair like me and need help. And that's genuinely what I've been passionate about. And even like sharing my brand, it's like, Hey, these are real women that just want to feel beautiful. And I was doing a podcast yesterday with, um, Carlos and we were like, you know, what, what do you love about doing extensions? And it's like, yes, the money, but it's like, I don't know how, if you feel like this way, I'm sure you do, but it's like, you have women come in and they're almost like, kind of like they look they're not like sad but like you put the hair in and then all of a sudden they're like yeah and they like feel all sexy and you're like they walk they walk different yeah i I have women who have cried in my chair and i'm just like oh my god you're like i love my job it makes me so happy but it's crazy because when you see that transformation in women in like a four-hour period you don't feel bad for charging in the thousands of dollars. You're like, right. I just impacted her life. Like yep. she, this is like her thing. She feels more confident. She feels sexy. She's a better mom. She's a better, better wife. I say husband. She's, <laughs> you know, and I really do believe that hair can transcend into so many areas of women's lives. And I mm-hmm. think that's like w- w- one of the things I'm, I'm so uh, passionate about. So tell me, um, when did what? When did you first join MBR? Like, which which con were you? I am BMS four. <laughs> BMS four. Yes. Okay. I I always because we don't call them BMS convention one two three because we've done so many and yeah. then like when COVID happened we turned them into virtual events so I'm like we're on like BMS con VE seventy five I'm like I don't even know but I I. When I've had students in the program for a while, I'm like, you were one of the first five, weren't you? Like the first five cons, because yeah. we those were our big ones that we did in person, which we're bringing those back this year. Yeah, I know it'll I be fun. It. It'll be fun. The energy and everything. So oh, when you so came, good. was Garrett involved? Yes, it okay. was his last his oh, last his event, last year. and they. I am so excited to have Garrett back. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what your experience was at your first event. Like you came, why did you come to learn natural beaded rows? And then when you got to the event, were you like, holy shit, what are we doing? My mind was blown. (laughs) I signed up in April of 2019. Okay. um, And I was, you know, the big money stylist and you can make, you can make all this money. And I was like, oh, well, I need that because mm-hmm. I'm literally working six days a week behind the chair, 14, 15 hour days. Yeah, you're that. I had a little boy at the time. Now mm-hmm. he's 19. He's not so little anymore. Aww. I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> but in the time it was like, you know, my life consisted of work and yeah. I, I had the mom guilt and that's probably one of the worst things to ever have. Were you working like typical stylist hours, like eight to eight? <laughs> no, I was doing like six, six a.m. <laughs> I was even traveling up north to salons up north because I felt like I couldn't charge those prices yeah. down where I was at. So right. I was um, actually renting a booth out of American Fork mm. of all places. Yeah, and, which that's not even a bigger town. Right, yeah. right. So right. it's all what your story was. Yep. Yeah. So I bought my ticket to BMS and I feel like that's where consistency like came in for me mm. is because to get into the 
convention, you had to do six months of pre-training. Oh, you were in that And one. it was like, <laughs> if you didn't get this done, and I was like, oh, no, I'm getting this done. So, yeah. I mean, I, I learned. Was it a $5,000 ticket then? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't tell my husband, and I was like, I'm just going to do this. And then when I went to convention, I was like, okay, so here's the thing. I bought this ticket for $5,000, and so I'm going to, but I promise it's going to work. I swear I'm going to make this work. And I showed up, and convention was, I mean, I just went to learn hair, and I had a breakdown, and I cried because, (laughs) you know, you're standing there in front of all these people, and you're explaining why it is that you're there, and you think it's to make more money, but it's not. It's it's to have time. Yeah, yeah. We run out of that way too fast. I, it's so crazy because that's one of the things I'm so passionate about is and and that's why we still preach. I had I mean, I've been through the burnout phase in my career, too. Yeah. And this is actually what got me to just only focus on extensions. I consolidated. I, I was working like six days a week. I was if a client wanted to fly in, I was like, oh, they're flying. I have to work Saturdays. Like, right. even though I was like trying to break out of whatever our industry tells us we have to do, I was still kind of falling back into some of the same patterns of like, oh, but I really like doing her color. Well, I don't, she's a nice person, so I'm going to take this on. And I got to this point, and I I was like flying back to Utah doing clients too. (laughs) And I got, it was kind of when I was getting my brand going. And then I finally was like, I'm not doing that. And when we moved to California, this is when I was like, I'm on, this is like my fresh start. I was like, I'm only taking extension clients. I'm only marketing extension clients. I'm not going to fly back to Utah to get extension, like, because I would fly to Utah and get, like, content. Yeah. And then, like, posts that I was taking clients in Arizona. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I'm not going to do that. And it's crazy because I went from, like, I, I, like, tripled my income within, like, a three-month period just consolidating to, I call it, like, the 333. Yeah. And I, not only that, but I hired an assistant and then, which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute. (laughs) And my husband was like, I was tripling my income. My husband was like, you have life back in your eyes. And I was like, oh my gosh. And at this point I was teaching Natural Beauty Rose, but I wasn't teaching like the lifestyle. I wasn't teaching any of the business. Like the academy and the mastermind back then hadn't really evolved. But it, it is true. Like, I feel like as artists, like, we love what we do, especially with the hair extension transformations. They're so rewarding. They and are. we really are helping people through this transformation. So it kind of gets to this place where you, like, you, we do, we, we burn ourselves to the ground. We do. But yeah. it's it's interesting because that now, like, that's what we preach and teach inside the academy is, like, just take on your MBR clients you know, work the hours that you want to work and have time with your family or heaven forbid you have a little bit of time for yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Because if not, you lose, you, you literally lose yourself. Yeah. You, you, you have like to, to like, yeah, it was like, for me, I'm like, there's things like, I'm like, well, obviously I'm always going to have hair, but it's like, I like getting my nails done and I like getting my lashes done. And those are like things that I do for me. You right. know what I mean? So you, okay. So you came to BMS con four, 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 uh, four yeah. and you're, did you feel like it was just like what made when you got there like when we the first thing we ask is like why are you here so did it do were you just kind of like well yeah i'm here for hair and then you kind of allowed yourself to dig deeper Uh uh-huh yeah when they when you stood up and told your why as to why you were there you think that it was for certain things but you learn really quickly that it's just something you're telling yourself yeah and really there's something deeper down inside that you don't even know. You really? It's it's hurting you and it emotionally is hard. And I remember just standing up and um, I remember having, I cry a lot, okay? I just <laughs> am a big ball of love. And so I, I mean, I just was crying and to tell everybody and to be open and vulnerable yeah. like that. But it's very freeing. Yeah, it was. It was. So what was your why? My why was to have more time with my son. So I was a single mom. Mm. Um, I've always worked two or three jobs. I put oh, wow. myself through hair school. Um, and actually Kiki is the one who wanted me to kind of go into this because she knows that I've always been a single mom mm-hmm. and I've always worked as hard as I can to provide, but it was never enough. And I, yeah. I pretty much missed out on my entire son's upbringing. Mm-hmm. My mom. Cause you're doing, raised, you're doing what you think you need to do p- to provide for your son, right? but you're missing out on that time. Yeah, yeah. And it was hard. So to really say that out loud to people, because I was a person who was always like, I'm fine. I don't need your help. I yeah. don't need anybody's help. I can do this myself. Yeah, I'm strong. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's almost like, and I don't, I feel like that's kind of like women do that. We're like, no, I got this. I got this. I'm strong. Mm-hmm. I'm strong. And then it's like, we don't, we're, we don't need to persevere. That's not necessarily strength. You right. know what I mean? It's like. Okay, 
I, if I could create whatever I wanted to do, like, what would that look like, right? right. And it's, it's, I mean, I've had so many br- breakthroughs where, I mean, like I said, and burnout things similar where I was like, didn't know if I was going to stay married, had two kids, was like, I don't know, I got to make this work. And I'd hit this place where, like, crying at home, like, didn't get to see my babies, yeah. you know, and I'm like, on the fly, like, I'd leave work before they were up and come home when they were in bed, you know, and I yep. was like, I refuse to do this for another decade, you know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, this this has to change. And and I think it's like when you when you have those realizations and those moments that you're like, why am I why am I persevering? Why why can't I change this? Right. And you give yourself permission to create a new story. Yeah. So after attending um BMS Con, what you went home and did you just kind of slowly start implementing stuff? Like talk talk me through what the next chapter. So <laughs> when I got home, I was all in. I left uh, I left convention and I was so I drank all the Kool-Aid. Mm. I down that sucker <laughs> and I was all in and I was trying to find every way to get people in if it was like taking models and just like having a model price Mm. whatever I had to do to get people in you were hustling I was Mm -hmm. I was and I feel like I built up my NBR clientele within a one year and it was in Mm. 2020 when salon shut down it was my best year I had ever had and I almost tripled my income during 2020 during 2020 and I was just like when they told me to go all in I just did isn't that crazy and not only did you go all in but like then you get another roadblock you're like really but it almost makes it you had already you committed yeah so it didn't matter at that point because your commitment to yourself was so strong it didn't matter if salons closed down yeah and that's another thing I always tell people too I'm like you have to commit because once you flip that switch in your brain failure is not an option no. and it starts with committing to whatever the outcome is that you're looking for well and I've always been like that I've always pushed myself to want more mm-hmm. and to be better like mm-hmm. uh, any chance I got to go assist somebody or go to classes I just I didn't want to just be a basic hairstylist because yeah. my family alone told me that you would never amount to anything going mm-hmm. into hair at all and so it was like another reason to be like no I'm gonna be yeah. more than just a hairstylist yeah so. It's crazy. I um, I was doing the numbers with Garrett yesterday because we were actually getting ready to do Academy Convention in April. And we decided, I don't know if I should, I'm supposed to share this. Sometimes I share stuff when I get in trouble. I love secrets. I no. know. <laughs> I have secrets. We are opening up 75 tickets to public. So did you ever come to an event where we mix them? Huh? It's fun. It like is. we break into pods. Yes, and it's, I was it's part back of that. to, the, we're kind of like implementing some of like the original stuff. I Which I was like, we need to, I'm like, screw the games. Like, we don't need bingo this year. No, no. <laughs> I think you come together more and you get more fired up when yeah. you're actually, I I feel like the, the academy, I found so much, so many friends mm. that I still to this day, I just barely flew out to Tennessee to go hang out with Hannah Rose. Oh, nice. And we, I mean, it was so fun. I have built friendships that I never thought yeah. that I'd be traveling all over the United States to go see my friends from yeah. conventions. Because we built the bond in the beginning when we yeah. had like our first five conventions, like they were strong. And then it was, it wasn't like the, our last couple conventions were really fun, uh-huh. but I was like, we got to go back to what made this company different yeah it we got to like bring that like fire and that soul back and women coming on stage and telling their truth and crying and they're like I don't even know. because that's when you make pivots in your life and that's when you, you, you make a difference um it's interesting that I hate the stigma that it's still hairdressers are like you're never gonna amount to anything like it why would you do that mm-hmm. and it's so funny because especially in a small town like doing hair at the level that you're at you're probably making more than the accountants and the doctors and like you're like yeah. okay that's fine and it's almost like but yet the doing hair still has that stigma of like oh you're not gonna you're not gonna make it okay there's one in a million okay well Brett did it because she's a salon owner right right but it's interesting because when I and I just wanted to share this really quickly because when I um, first started my brand and I decided to do just hair extensions and consolidated to the 333 the first year I did that I made five hundred thousand dollars as a, so, as a solo artist, like it was the first year I bought my salon. I hired an assistant. I doubled down on myself. I said, I'm only taking these clients. I'm only working these days. I'm only taking like I'm only taking so many new installs a month. Like I just did the math yeah. and I was like, and it was like uh, it was when I was like, I, I bought a salon. So I had to commit. I was like really freaked out. And I was like, OK, right. but I was like, holy shit. And then the next year I hired one um artists and we had one assistant there was two of us in there and I broke a million and I was like I'm like what (laughs) 
and that's I love it. and that's when Garrett came in. And he's like, "We need to start teaching business," and I was like, "I think we do." <laughs> But for me, I never thought I was super business savvy. I'm good at sales and I am good at like knowing the facts of where I'm at. Yeah. But I just, there is money in doing hair. And so like, even as a solo artist, like bringing in that kind of money, I was told that was not possible in the hair industry. Right. Like I was like, no. And so that's like something we, we teach like inside the academy is like, yeah, like you, this can be possible, right? You right. got to let go of these services. You got to know your overhead. You got to know your numbers and all these things. So it's it's like you can have success as a salon owner, but you can also have success as an individual artist. If yeah. you choose a niche, you follow your boundaries and you have good good pricing set for yourself. So now tr- kind of fast forward, you you went there, you got your book of business going. When did you buy your salon? Um, so what I year? T- took over 2021. Okay. So. But you had already had, you were kind of in a space where you had built up your MBR clientele. Yeah. Okay. And then walk me through, in a nutshell, that year of shit show when you become a salon owner, because I get it. <laughs> that that year was, it was rough because I feel like in a salon that you've already worked in, mm-hmm. and then you come in, so I worked with these girls for six, seven, eight, nine years in this salon already, mm. and then you go in as their boss, that's that's yeah. hard. That's yeah. hard. And you I want to be friends with everybody, but then at the same time you have to you have, you to, have be to be the be boss. boss. Yep. So going through that transition and like and then you have all these other big ideas, mm-hmm. especially a comeback from NBR mm-hmm. and convention and I'm like, I have all these ideas. I just want to tear the walls down yeah, and we're yeah. gonna do we're this. Gonna start over. Yeah. yeah. And then you have people that are on board and then you have other people that aren't. They don't want to so, grow. No. Yeah. And I I I try to always have an open mind as to being a better salon owner because I've never done it before. So I'm always open to like, what can I help you guys with to to build this salon up? So I feel like in our area, we have a really good, really good salon. Mm-hmm. I have amazing girls that work for me. So I'm lucky that way. Yeah. But you have a good like vibe and a good culture inside your salon. Yeah. But then I started to pretty much I dropped all my clients, uh, anything that wasn't NBR. And mm-hmm. I. I was scared to shitless. Like I didn't know what to do. And people were like, you can't just do that. Like, what if you don't have any, any NBR clients? And I'm like, well, I'm okay. Like, right. But if I keep promoting, then then I'll keep. And then if you have space on your gap or on your books, I find too. And that maybe you're, I'm, I'm, I feel like you'd probably be the same way, but it's like you, you committed again. You said, uh-huh. I'm only taking MBR. And though, so when you're looking at your books and you see those gaps, it's almost like, well, got to get on and do a live. Well, got to get on and do a post. It like right. pushes you to promote harder. When you're comfortable, you're like, or you don't have any space on your books. You're like, I no, I could post, but you're kind of more lackadaisical about it because you're not as hungry for a lead. Right. And right. so when you have those gaps, you're like, <gasps> okay, so you're all of a sudden doing more hair tutorials and talking about MBR. And then you get like, one new client that that month, like one new client is a big deal with hair extensions. It is. You know, it it's is. in the thousands of dollars of income. And then they are coming back to you every six to eight every, weeks. Yep. So. And I was like, imagine if you got just two new MBR clients a month, right? Right. right. That I mean, if you could, could if that's how I kind of always break things down when I'm like freaked out. I'm like, if I could just get two. Okay, if I can just get three this month, you know. That's how it was in the beginning. I was like, okay, if I could just get 10 NBR clients, I will be set. Mm -hmm. I I mean, that's all I need, and I would be happy. Mm -hmm. And then I'd hit that 10, and I'm like, okay, so now if I just get 20. And then it got to a point where I'm like, I got 50 or 60 NBR clients. And you're like, oh, my God, this is it's working. Yeah, yeah. So it got easier to drop those clients as I built it up. Because you could see it working. And it ended up being that I'm working – I was working like five and six days a week still, Mm -hmm. but taking like two or three clients a day. So then I slowly got down to four to five days a week and we just did our fact map. So I'm working on getting down to three to four days a week. I, it's funny. I used to do the three, 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 and then I went to two days a week doing three clients and then I went to two days doing two clients. Then I went to one day doing two clients and now I semi retired. I love it. <laughs> but you know what? I um I haven't retired from doing hair. I'm I'm doing hair if it pertains to education yeah. or for filming something, if I'm doing helping with like model prep. So I'm still in the salon. Like I try to get in the salon like once once a week. Um, yeah. whether it's creating content, talking to my girls, physically doing hair, because I'm like, I don't want to completely get out of the mix. But I was even getting to the point where I wanted to put more into the education. Yeah. And I had to let go. I had to let go of being the artist behind the chair. And it was really hard for me because oh, be I hard. loved my clients. I loved 
I, I love doing hair, you know what I mean? But when it became not fun anymore because I was too tapped out on capacity, I was like, okay, where do I need to put my time into? And right now I was like, I need to put it back into like education. So this year for me is, is I always tell people, I'm like, I'm back, I'm back. Yes. Not that I was gone, but I did have two kids in three years. So I took a sl- It's That's a lot to take I, on. I just took a little, I just took a little siesta and now I'm back. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Well, I I love hearing um, people's stories and kind of like their their journeys and and it's cool to hear that it's working right from right. from a owner standpoint to hear like I've always kind of seen you and I, I but I didn't know like your full story I knew you were in Utah I couldn't remember where so it's fun for me to even like hear that. W- I can only do so much, but when you meet me halfway and we supply, you know, a community, when we supply the academy, when we kind of do all these things and you do the work, your results prove that, right? Right. So it's just, it's fun for me to watch success stories and know that it's possible, even when you live in a small town, even when, like, you're like, I spent, you know, 10 years burning myself out and had no idea this this was even a possibility. And that's what I'm so passionate about in the hair industry is it's like, let's not burn ourselves to the ground. That's unnecessary. No. And you're going to, that life's going to go by, especially when you're a mom and you're going to be like, I wish I spent more time with my my son. Like that well, would have been fun. Yeah, you know? I missed out on that. And now he's 19 years old, and yeah. it's like I now I have time to. He's like my little travel buddy now, mm-hmm. and we we get to do those things now. But I yeah. do miss when they're little. Yeah, when they're little, that yeah. time goes by so fast. Even yeah. for me, my little Charlie, she's one, and I'm I um. It's funny because. I, I just feel like I always need to soak her in because she's my last one because yes. I know it goes by so fast. So like for me, I'm pretty busy, but I tried and I don't know if you do this, but like I because I don't want to feel like I missed out. I always it, I schedule like little lunches or little like pockets throughout the day where I'm like, I need to spend time with this kid or this kid or this kid. Because I went through this phase where I felt like I had to be with my kids 24-7. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I don't have to be with my kids 24-7. Like, I love what I do. I love working. That's fine. But I do need to carve out pockets where, like, I can, like, not feel like I missed out on on those little moments. Yeah. But, yeah. but well, it's, it's amazing to have you on the show. I'm so happy for your success. Thank and you. it sounds like you're crushing it. And life's going well. And I'm, are you planning on coming to Academy Convention? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like we, again, we have Academy Convention coming. So if you are in the Academy and you're listening to this podcast, you guys could better be there. There's actually only limited seats this year. <gasps> nice. So, um, I mean, obviously I'm sure you'll be there, but I'm, I've been telling the Academy, I'm like, cause we can only hold so many in the right. space. Right. And now we're going to open it up to 75 public students. I'm like, so you got to get it. You got to get your ticket. We're going to, re- I don't know when we're releasing this. I'll have to ask Katie. But just like when they come out, make sure you get ready. your get, get ready. ready. And if you are um, somebody who's never heard of Natural Beauty Rose, Google it. If you want more information about our education, go to mbr.education. If you're like, these guys sound crazy and I kind of want to attend this BMS <laughs> convention. Um, it's not till April, but we will be releasing tickets soon. Again, there's only going to be 75 available. So make sure you're following us on social media and getting all those things. Brett, tell us where your salon is located one more time and what's it called. And I'm, what's your Instagram handle? I am in E from Utah. It is called Studio B and it, it's Brett underscore code Cody underscore hair. <laughs> Brett underscore too many underscores. So Brett Cody you, hair. Brett Cody hair. Look up <laughs> Brett Cody hair if you guys are in the Utah area and you want some fabulous hair extensions. She is one of my licensed artists and I can personally vouch for her work behind the chair. And also she seems like a solid human being. So there you go. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you every Tuesday. We re-release a new podcast. Um, if you like it, share it with your friends and we'll see you every Tuesday.